it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls, and this is just going to be a timeless bonus read. I'm just going to go with it because some of the messages that were coming up in my normal uh, sort of collective weekly reading, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome. Please make sure you subscribe if you like the content, but you can go check out my weeklies and then I break it down daily, okay? The messages have been extensive. They've been deep. I try to approach them with a little bit of sense of humor, but this might definitely be a time going into more times where we want to take that collective reading and break it out a little bit. All right. So we'll do like a pick a card or pick a pile. We're not going to get too fancy with it. I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, whatever. One, two, three, <laughs> something like that. Pick one, roll with it. And these will, will set the intention of what do you need to know? What, what kind of blocks are you going to be up against? What do you need to be prepared for and bring it down into the 3D reality just a little bit. Again, these are not going to be fortune telling. They're not shallow. It's not that, but I want us to break it down into groups so that we can be aware. So let's break it down into four groups. Four is a nice number. So pick one, two, three, or four. One of the ways that I like to pick readings, I know some readers put crystals if I had thought ahead it's very impromptu I just said in a daily not to be spontaneous or too impulsive and here I am um, <laughs> but we're just going to run with it here I, I like to look in the description box and see what number combos so like the timestamps, what number combo really grabs you in, in a big way that's probably your biggest message if there's another one that you're gravitating towards watch that feel free to come back and watch you know the video it's timeless, so as often as you like. So let's get into it. Either group one, let's see what you need to be aware of to help you navigate through all of these things that are going to be happening out in the collective and bringing that into your existence. Okay, so the first card out is healing. I'm just examining the card here for a little bit because this is a new deck to me, and this card has giant medicine bottles in the background. <laughs> but also the thing that drew me in was that she has, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it here. She has like a chalice here at her heart space. You're gonna be able to see that, I don't know. Trust me, there's a chalice there. Okay, so a cup, you can think ace of cups. Emotions, emotions overflowing. This could be a good indication and it's right at her heart space. And so this is very much heart healing. Now, if you haven't checked it out yet, I do have meditation challenges with Archangel Raphael, Metatron, and Michael as of the recording of this. Maybe by the time you come across it, there are so many others over at gumroad.com slash angel souls. So if you want to do work with Archangel Raphael, head on over there for that seven day meditation challenge to do some heart activation. But what this is, is healing your emotions. And yeah, it could be physical healing as well. This is healing... Yeah, some of you out there have been taught that it's unsafe to be in your heart. Whether that was a message from your family, you know, being sensitive is a bad thing, or if you were taught that through toxic relationships, perhaps, you know, uh, maybe you have been in one nasty situation after another. Maybe you've been in situations where there are friends who have betrayed you, and it seems like, you know, in that sense, the world has kind of gone nuts. Okay, it's every man for themselves. And it's, you know, if I don't feel like showing up, I don't have to. If I don't feel like responding to you, I don't have to. Not being very respectful of one another. And this has taken a toll on you. If you've chosen this group, this has taken a toll on you. Now, if you're sitting here going, this isn't me. I know a lot of readers would tell you to choose a different group. You could certainly do that, but I wouldn't. You came here for a good reason. You need to hear this. All right. So just trust that. And I'm hearing prim and proper, having to heal this idea that you always have to be prim and proper. And in this case, we're seeing a woman, okay? We're seeing a woman and she's dressed in a very specific way. She has her pearls on, right? And again, this is that sense of prim and proper and being emotional. Interesting. Hang with me as we go through this. But what is this big, what are these big things on her back? medicine I'm not gonna say any more about that you take that as you will but in this case this is showing that there's some need for a remedy to heal the heart space what have you been taught what heartbreak have you been through there might have been someone from your past who you were ripped away from 
for some of you, this might have a bit have been somebody who passed over, but not everybody. Um, but this might have been a long lost love. This might have been, you know, there's something there that affects your, your third dimensional ego consciousness reality in a big way. This isn't for everybody going to mean that you have to go chasing after an old love. But I think you need to heal the dynamic around that. So for some of you out there, you might be holding up and holding back from love because you're hung up on an old flame. I don't care if you're with somebody or not, okay? There's something that you learned long ago from that dynamic. And it has to do with your self-worth as well. Again, you know, we have a woman portrayed here. You can take this any way you want, but this is a perfect example of expectations. You're supposed to behave a certain way. You're supposed to look a certain way. Um, live for your man kind of thing. Now, if you're a man watching this or... Uh, another gender watching this you know that, that remember that's just one example so you can interpret that any way that you want but that it has this heart thing like I'm going to define your heart your heart it's a heart manipulation and it might not be present it might be something that was from the past or what we perceive as the past time is not linear and it's still cycling around maybe even in your subconscious who knows get with a therapist if you feel that you need to to help you let go but healing is the very thing and not giving yourself a chance to heal trying to pretend like everything is all right why we have a narrative that says that's how you're supposed to function it's not okay so give yourself a chance to say hey that hurt hey i don't like this okay not to fall into victimhood because it's going to lower your frequency but to at least give your heart a chance here Oh, hi. This one wants to come out. Oh, our dreams. Now, she looks creepy to me. <laughs> she looks really creepy. Okay, so this, I'm going to be, again, these are very third dimensional readings. So kind of what you as human beings might be experiencing would be nightmares or things that need to be healed. Can you see that? Again, I got the lamp. I guess I could reposition those, but maybe we can do that. Is she creepy? I think... Now, I wouldn't want to see this at the foot of my bed. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, whatever. But <laughs> some of you are being haunted by those past memories. Um, and there's such a want. Her eyes are following me, even when I turn the card. You see? Look. Like, look. <laughs> <It's scary. laughs> and she's also standing in water. Water represents emotions. We have this chalice over here, which is usually, at least with tarot, it's, it's you know, the Ace of Cups is usually a chalice with water pouring out of it. Uh, I think, right? I don't know. I'm not really a tarot reader. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is um, trying to calm your emotions, but it's sort of, again, like the ghostly memories are popping up. So what, you're aware of this. As I said that, it's my microphone across my prayer board, forgive me. I made a whole explanation about the my choice of microphone. It's the one that works. That's that's the explanation. Anyway, <laughs> but the cord's making noise, so sorry about that. Uh, so you have to be not just kicking aside what's coming up for you in your dreams. This might be unlocking some very deep traumas. These videos are not meant to be a replacement for therapy. Please get with an expert. Be discerning about who you go to. But if you want to be able to get through the coming times, you need to heal your emotions. Now, I know that's a very general statement. I got it. I heard it. Okay. This might be pain over having lost a loved one, feeling like something got ripped away from you. Something was ripped away and you just never got over it. Not that you have to. The idea here is to be able to, I don't know if you want to see it this way, maybe flood it with light, okay? <laughs> and be able to cope with it better. So when it does pop up in your dreams, it's not a nightmare. It's just an unusual dream, right? So that's that's what we're getting at here so that you're not afraid of your own aspects. You're not afraid of your own past experiences 
because you, maybe you feel you're going to have some sort of guilt if you look at it. Or maybe if it was somebody who broke up with you or you were taught that you have to be this if you're going to get a love partner, um, that you're still living and functioning from that place and therefore you're functioning from a, a place of lack. Okay. I remember I had a coworker one time. It was so cute. He told me his, he brought his little boys in to work. It was like, bring your kids to work day. And one of his little boys informed his dad that he was going to marry me one day. <laughs> and he told his little boy that I was taken because there was a whole narrative that somebody in power was with me. It was a lie. It was not true at all. I know I've had the most dramatic life. That's why I'm like, guys, don't do the drama. Okay. You don't want it. <laughs> you don't want this. But when he was telling me this, I guess the little boy said, well, if she's taken, then I'll make sure I get really good grades so that I can get a really good job and I can marry someone like her one day. I know. Uh, cutest thing ever. But I said to this man, I was like, now you told your little boy that he doesn't have to get a big fancy job to be loved. You told him that, right? And his response was like, what kind of weird thing is that to say? And it made me wonder if he hadn't been taught that himself. He was a high level executive himself. So, you know, these are the kinds of things that we have to start coming. We got to stop being numb to it. All right. And giving it some space so that we can heal and move past it. All right. Balancing, finding your strength. Okay. Now this balancing card, for those of you watching this, this is a message that it's not going to be like, let me see what's wrong with me and then fix it. And then everything's fine. You're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have days where you thought you were all right and then everything hits you again. <sighs> it takes a lot of power. I say this every time this card comes up. It takes a lot of power to be a ballerina. That's what we see here in this card. And it does take a lot of effort perhaps and strength to be able to find your harmony, to find your peace. So I would, yeah, the feeling I'm getting around this is to approach this healing and approach these memories with grace. You don't have to go ripping everything open, especially if you don't have proper support. That's not going to be the, the thing to do. And being balanced and harmonious in how you are approaching things. So for you guys, it is more about the emotional healing. That's the big thing that's coming up. This is the thing that's keeping you out of your grace. It's the thing that makes you overreact to things perhaps or to want to control others or to control a situation. I keep using like driving. I think it's the perfect example. It's, it's where people feel powerful. It's where they're in their little cages on wheels, right? So I guess they feel empowered from that. And if you're not going fast enough for me, I have a right to be mad at you and try to endanger you. People do this, okay? People freaking do this. Or on the other side, you could have somebody who's like, you know what? I don't like that you're speeding, so I'm going to purposely box you in and I'm going to go really slow so I can hold up traffic. You know, we have those people who do that too. So this is that thing. This is, this is the undercurrent. This is the thing that is getting you to react in your surface level way in ways that might be out of character for you. Or you might say, no, that's perfectly in, char in character for me. I love speeding. Why? Where are you going? I don't know. I just like to go fast. Why? Think about it. Trying to feel something? You want to have control? You want to feel powerful? It's not the way to do it. It's just not. This is what you need to be aware of. Right here. Okay. And then we have expression. Again, I love these cards. This is a great deck. New to me. Awesome. Love it. Um, but this card, look at this. See if you can see this. So at the top there, there are all these like beautiful, beautiful, colorful butterflies, ideas, inspiration, creative pursuits, what have you. And then it contrasts with where she is. She's in this sort of black and white world. She has all these great ideas, but she can't express them. She has all of these things that she wants to say, but she can't put it out there. And look at what she has over her mouth and her nose. Can you see that? It's a mask. It's a piece of fabric. Now, it's not a thick piece of fabric. You can still see 
her mouth and her nose. She can breathe, but barely. She could speak, but if it's highly edited. But the true beauty and the true self, as magnificent as it is, is being held back. Okay? It's being held back. Why is that? Because if this person, you, <laughs> right, were to try to take your ideas and just bring them out, it would have to clunk through so many layers of pain and bad memories and bad experiences. And then by the time it makes it out, it's not at its full power anymore. Too much has been lost and chipped away by the time it came out. So that is why you're having to sort of face your ghosts. And to find that harmony and that balance and your strength. How do you do that? You do that by not pushing away. You do that by not, you know, when something does come up, not going, oh, I can't handle that. Oh, I can't even look at that. I have too many things on my plate with work or family to have an honest discussion with anybody. Or I'm in a good mood. I don't want to go there. Or I'm hurting. I don't have the strength to go there. It doesn't mean that you have to push ahead to try to make something happen. But I think what this is encouraging is to, first of all, know this about yourself. If you're watching this group, you have beautiful ideas. You have beautiful insights. And yeah, you might be a very creative person. Don't run away with your ego. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> you might have all of these incredible things that you want to bring forward but there could be a fear there's a huge fear of not being loved so some of you might have disconnected from the world some of you may show up in the world but you don't really feel like you're surrounded by real friends some of you might be telling yourselves a lie look at her mouth again no, no, no. My friends are sweethearts. Uh, if you're already saying that, <laughs> first of all, was it 1992 in here? That's how I know, okay? I'm old and I'm from that time. Anyway, but, <laughs> but you might be telling yourself a lie. Just because your friends are willing to party with you doesn't make them real friends. Or just because your friends are willing to go play golf with you on the weekends doesn't mean they're your real friends. There's a lot here about looking at your patterns, even like socially. What do you allow into your world? Okay. So I'm going to get some, a couple of cards maybe from the Archangel Michael deck. Let's see. You know it's time. You know it's time to look at these things. And for some of you, it's like, why do I keep attracting in these horrible love partners? Why do I keep attracting in friends that betray me? Why does no one respect me? Why, why do people think that they don't have to, you know, talk to me when I'm talking to them? Like, what, you know, like what is that? Um, it's because they're the wrong people to be around. They might be right for someone else and their path, but not right for you. Okay, so the first card that came out is your children are watched over by angels. Dear guardian angels of my children, born and unborn, thank you for watching over my children and ensuring their happiness and safety. It's a big issue right now, right? With the kids going back to school, at least the time of recording this, they're timeless, but there you go. Um, and ensuring their happiness and safety. Please guide me so that I know the best ways to be a good parent and role model for my own and other people's children. And this also has to do with the inner child as well. Again, hearkening back to what were we taught? Were you taught that you can't speak up for yourself? Were you taught that you're just beneath others or you know whatever it is whatever this weird thing is um it's time to come out of that and it's also saying that the kids are going to be all right you will know what to do if you have children you will know what to do in order to protect them but again in general for this group i think this is very much about the inner child and then we have it's time to leave this unhealthy situation archangel michael what parts of my life do i need to focus on more closely right now Thank you for helping me hear your answers and for giving me the courage to make healthy changes in my life. 
So it's not enough to just heal from, why am I holding it like, <laughs> it's not enough to just heal from a situation. You know, it, it, it says it's time to leave this unhealthy situation. So for some of you, that hits home, doesn't it? But it's not enough to just leave the unhealthy situation. You have to heal why you got into it in the first place. So it's a lot of self-reflection. It's a lot of looking at where do I hold myself back? Where am I imbalanced? Right? It's all of this right here. It's a lot of where, where did my dreams die? <laughs> right? It, it's very that. My dreams feel like a ghost now. I don't even know who I am because at some point I believe myself to be unworthy. I believe myself I was just functioning from the place that I was in. Yeah. Hmm. Just functioning from the place that I was in and therefore limiting what I thought I could accomplish. So there's a, another point here for some of you out there that you're learning to be more discerning about what you're given. Okay. So if somebody comes along and they're trying to define you or someone's coming along and they're trying to tell you how things are going to go, they're trying to control you um, or you want to try something new and someone says, that's not you. Or <laughs> I, I've gone through this. I wonder if, if any of you can relate. Have you ever had anybody who doesn't know you at all and then they start to get to know you and they're like, whoa, that's not who I thought you were at all. Like, this is new information. Why would it surprise you that your impression of somebody isn't accurate? It wouldn't be. You don't know them, right? So watch people who are doing that because there is a sense there of who I think you should be is who I expect you to be. Hot dating tip right there. There you go. You get with somebody who's like, wow, I, I didn't I didn't take you to be that kind of person or whatever, <laughs> you know. You know, people laying their expectations upon you. Where do you have those kinds of patterns? Okay. So we're gonna leave it there for you guys and get on to group two. Hi there, group two. Let's see what you need to know to be able to get through in a very third dimensional ego consciousness world, right? With all the things that are occurring. Now Okay, before I even get to any cards, I'm hearing major shakeups. Yeah, you guys are definitely the ones that are getting the waves crashing on you. So some of you, uh, it could be that you have just been after one thing after another or, you know, one thing after another has been happening in your world or to people that you know. And it does have you sort of at times, in a manner of speaking, freezing. Just sort of freezing on spot and going, okay, okay, okay. I don't know what side of the argument to be on. Uh, what you need to realize is that you don't need to choose sides. That's actually a really good instinct that you have to not give in to division tactics. So good job, okay? <laughs> so you're doing something right. But still, complete burnout, complete overwhelm. Uh, some of you are not... Now, I'm not a therapist. Please do not treat this as a replacement for therapy. Go get help if you need it. Be discerning about who you go to. But there is this, um, I want to hear, like, I, or I'm hearing, like, uh, dysregulation. Dysregulation. So some of you are not emotionally attuned, and that's okay, because you were taught. You know, we all come in with our soul's contract. So we're coming in with the experience that we're supposed to have. So you're taught to maybe shut down your emotions. That's a common one. Or... Scapegoats. A lot of you out there have been the scapegoats of your family, of your group of friends, or maybe you tried to rebel against that kind of thing because it made you feel powerless. And so you try to be the queen bee and it doesn't work and <laughs> whatever. I mean, there's so many different ways that this can go. Now, if I say queen bee and you think mean girls and you're a 65 year old man sitting here listening to this, you're like, this is stupid. This is, this is not my reading. It, it could be. Okay, listen, because you still have your stupid queen bees in the work environment, right? You have, and when I say queen bee, it could be some guy who just comes in and thinks he has all the answers and he's the greatest thing that's ever walked the face of the planet, right? So that could happen. So just pay attention to that. Where, where is this dynamic of I have to tiptoe around everybody else? I have to work really hard to make everybody else happy. You might be the parent that stays home and you're taking it off your teenage kids or, you know, whatever. And you're just like, it's just not worth fighting anymore. Well, guess what? You've officially gotten beaten down to the ground. And now what? This is a time for a lot of you. 
This is not going to be easy. Where you will be looking around and realizing that when I'm down, there are people in my world who will walk right over me or kick me while I'm down or laugh because I fell down and say, look at you, look how weak you are. You're going to be disappointed, but not shocked. Maybe you held out hope that someone would be a better person one day. That maybe that person at work who does think they know everything might finally get a heart and turn it on. Or that impossible boss might see your worth and stop working you to death for nothing, right? It's not going to happen. Great, Michelle. Great reading. Love this. No, <laughs> hang with me here. What, what I'm getting at, and I think what the message is, is it's time to you, for you to be free from those situations. It's time for you to wake up to, this is not going to get better. Now, if you're thinking in terms of a marriage, no one here is telling you to get divorced. Okay? No. But if you are in a toxic situation, you might start to realize, okay, maybe I need to examine this need to see how I got into this that sort of thing I remember there was somebody who came to me they wanted my advice they were in this really bad marriage and the message that was coming up for them was to look at their patterns and to you know there's some personal things that came up and to look at all that and you know did that factor into why you made the choices that you did and this person went crazy and said how dare you say that to me this is clearly all his fault. He's the bad person. I'm a good person. Nobody ever said this person wasn't a good person. And started saying, you know, basically I expected you to tell me that I'm doing the right thing by getting a divorce. No one should ever tell you what choices you are to make in your own world. And the very reason why we have these situations come up is to look at how you can grow and develop from that, which would be going back and looking at how did I get there in the first place? Not like you're, you were stupid for doing it, right? I mean, what did I, who was I then compared to who am I now? How have I grown? What did I learn from the situation? That sort of thing, okay? So this might be one of those times where you're experiencing that. You're going to be going through that. Just do not as this person did. Battery said, nope, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> No, thank you. Okay, so I had to change that. So <laughs> I think what I was saying was, you know, do not as that person did and try to go down this road of, you know, victimizing themselves and saying, you know, I'm not to blame. There's nothing for me to learn here. That's not the case. All right. So I want you guys to be prepared mentally and emotionally for things to start cracking. This has already been happening. You chose this group. This has already been happening. There's like a breakdown. Maybe you've experienced this like nothing works. Like every time I try to make something happen, it falls apart. Or, you know, um, trying to understand where my friends are coming from and we're just at each other's throats. Or maybe you're realizing your family dynamics, you're just not taking it anymore. You just don't want to have to keep pretending like everything's okay for everybody else's comfort. Okay? Uh, could be that. Some of you are in school and... Uh, my hair feels weird, sorry. <laughs> I was just up shifting around, getting the battery, now everything's a mess. Uh, some of you are in school and maybe you're realizing, this isn't working. I just wanna get out and get into the world. Now, it's not gonna be the right thing for everybody to just give up. That's not what we're talking about here. But you do need to look at that, you know? Are you studying? Are you studying the right thing? Are you studying what you want to study or what somebody told you you should want to study? It's a lot of reclaiming of the self. Not living by anybody else's definition of you. Now that gets a little confounding and a little intimidating for some people because maybe you don't know who you are. You've never sort of had that chance to live for you. Okay. Yeah, communities. So there could be a lot of pressure from your community to show up a certain way, to be angry about the same things that they're angry about, or um, oh my God, 
what what is that from is it 1984 oh god it's been for i haven't read 1984 in decades but i'm seeing people in a line and they're all wearing overalls is that from 1984 because i feel like you're one of those people in the line and uh you're in a uniform and you're one now that could be very specific to you <laughs> if a uniform means something to you but i think metaphorically speaking like you want to step out of line it's like you're you're lining up to get your whipping and to be fed your next dose of identity this is who you're going to be why it's what we want who's we important people says who some of you are going to go pretty far with this, and you're going to be quite the rebels, perhaps. Okay. First card out is centering. Whew. You want to talk about a moment of, I'm not taking that, or I'm not doing that anymore, or I'm not, I'm not going to be lulled into a false sense of self. And you do that by centering, Okay. So this is very much the energy of not getting pulled into drama. Not judging the drama, just not partaking in it, okay? Um, not getting into arguments. I know that's a tough one, especially these days, but that is very much a division tactic. And for you specifically, if you're watching this, the thing that you're having to deal with right now is coming back within you and understanding who you are. Sense of self. Now, if that doesn't seem very glamorous to you, glamorous uh what you say well who cares i know that if i'm spiritual great things will happen that's not how it goes as a matter of fact if you've done spiritual practice you know it's one explosion after another as you awaken and as you get into that place of understanding yourself and that has to do with breaking open that side of you that maybe you always want to keep hidden that you didn't want to acknowledge maybe it is that you don't believe in yourself Maybe it is that you are afraid of your parents. Maybe it is that you are afraid of being bullied yet again. But you're 50 years old. And yet you're carrying this with you. Okay. It's a good day. You just won't see it right away. Because this might come with some hurt. And you have to be your own calm within the storm and you're going to have moments where perhaps you don't want to even see anybody or maybe you want to leave the event early not storming out and throwing a fit or anything like that but let's just say that you know you're there and you're like why did I agree to this I knew that I was going to come here and, I don't know, get spoken down to or have people be condescending or, you know, I'm pulling that from personal experience. I remember I lived in New York City and there were some people who, you know, they're, they're considered the upper echelon of society, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and some of them were really cool, but some of them, they would invite me to their party. Why? Because I'm a very embodiment of what they're missing in their lives. What they've always been taught to, uh, you know, basically shut down their empathy their warmth, their kindness sometimes. And some people, not everybody. Um, and here I am, like I said, at the very embodiment of everything that they're maybe missing. And they're treating me like their little puppy, their little accessory. Come to my party. Everyone's going to love you. Well, yeah, they love me. When I showed up, it was a whole lot of just like siphoning off of me. Comment down below if you can relate to this. There's a reason why this is coming up as an example siphoning off of me and if I would try to have a conversation with them they all behaved as if they were more intellectual than me <laughs> and the thing is, is I'm very I'm a well-educated person very balanced between my intellect and heart space and it was just a whole lot of getting knocked around at these events and, and being put down and yet being fed upon that's just an example of how sometimes th things go in this world. And yet the outside narrative was, whoa, you got to go to that party? I'm like, trust me, you didn't want to be there. It was horrible. <laughs> it was really weird. Uh, so, you know, that's the kind of thing where you might, if you find yourself in a situation where it's just not comfortable, it's not 
you know, something, something's off. Trust your instincts on it, okay? And, and release yourself from that situation. Now, you can take that as a metaphor for something bigger that's going on for you right now. Where it's like, I don't like going to family events because when I walk in, everybody has to tell me how I'm doing everything wrong. You know, maybe first for you guys, the message is to get that sense of self going. Like, don't go telling everybody who you are when you haven't really figured that out for yourself, okay? But having more self-respect, saying no. You're not going to pressure me into doing something I don't want to do just so I feel like I'm going along, you know, or, or what have you. So a lot of you are contending with that, and that's going to be part of that messy, um, sort of hurtful process. Don't allow yourselves to be gaslit, okay? Or scapegoated. Let's get another card. Okay. Intuition. We were just saying, oh my God, know when to walk away. We were just saying, you know, listen to, if you feel like you need to walk away from something, do that. And so strengthening your intuition, being centered, knowing which way you want to go. But look at this. There's like a bridge in the background and it's like she's walking away from it. I don't know. I just got that impression. She's walking away from it. So this might be you walking away from an old situation. Again, this is not, for a lot of you out there, it's not going to initially feel empowering. I know. We all want to be like, that's right. I'm going to go quit that job or I'm going to leave this terrible relationship and everything's going to be great. <laughs> no. It's going to come with a lot of adjustment. Uh, I was leaving an incredible, like you guys would not believe me if I told you how abusive and toxic this one job was that I had. Um so ridiculous that when I went and was talking to a therapist about it, she didn't believe me. Always be careful, okay? Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's how crazy it was. But even when I was leaving that, there was relief, but it hurt because it was very much the end of an era. And sometimes, and I've said this before, we get addicted to the pain or we get used to the pain. It becomes part of our narrative. It becomes part of our story. And it's running on autopilot. So we're not even aware of it. It's just sort of there. Uh, and then it goes away. And then there's silence. And the need to constantly keep protecting yourself, it stops. And in a weird way, maybe you won't know what to do with yourself. What do I do if I'm not surviving? What do I do if I don't have to watch my back? What do I do if I can just flow with making money? How does that go? <laughs> right? How am I supposed to show up for that? Uh, so I want to say that there might be some grief even in walking away from an old situation. But you're getting to know yourself first, okay? Without everybody else telling you who you are. Protection. So here is you standing in your truth. Um, Yeah, this is fascinating. So she has kind of like, a, it's it's so subtle. I have to have it like right on my eyeballs to see it. I also don't have my glasses on. <laughs> anyway, um, but there's like a little halo up here. So that is divinity. She has a sword that is lighting up. And to me, the, the impression I got looking at this is that the sword is just beginning to light. Like I almost think that light's going to go all the way down. I'll hold it up here closer in a second. But it's going to go all the way down. And there are these two swans um, which partner up last I heard for life correct me if I'm wrong on that so it feels like there there's a, a team behind you definitely you have your spiritual team there's a lot of divine truth coming through and that's how you know you are protected can I get that close enough for you to see again I don't know if you're going to be able to see all of that but this is what you're this is where you're at right now where you know you're divinely protected it's okay for you to follow your own path to speak your truth, but to be careful with that. Again, if some of you out there feel like you are in very, very toxic situations, okay, this could be somebody who actually wants to get revenge. Now, that's not fear-mongering. That's not fear-mongering. But just, you know, don't fall into their narrative is why I'm bringing that up. It's not so that you get scared. It's so that you can, you know, it depends on your situation. But if you know, for example, you're going to leave a job, and maybe you're going to go accept another position within the company. Maybe your old boss is going to be running their mouths about you. You see what I'm saying? Um, but you're okay. Stand strong. This is going to be a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Okay. Empower. I love it. Okay, so you're coming. Oh, and there's two cheetahs, it looks like. 
or leopards. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. They're like drawn uh, at the bottom there. And it is power. You are finding your way through. You are finding your own true sense of power. Now, this is not an egotistical power. This is not a I'm right, you're wrong power. If you're in that place, good luck. Okay, I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> you can't do that. No, you can, but I wouldn't advise it. All right, so anyway, you're coming into your own power and you are protected. So this is, uh, again, it's for you guys, it's all about that sense of self. I can't say it enough. It's a sense of self. Let me get a couple of cards from the Archangel Michael deck. You'll come through. You are going to come through. So especially now, if you're watching this and you are going through a heck of a scenario, maybe it is like I, I'm getting a feeling of like a veteran. Maybe you just came back from some situation or whatever. And now I'm a, a veteran, but I've heard from others that it takes a long time for them to be able to get mental help. And you were just in a trauma situation. Um, it might be that kind of thing where you're like, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for help, but help is not coming. You might start to get into a place of despair. Your team has you protected. Ask, ask for help. Okay. And you'll be guided to the right people. Decide to be happy now. This is that kind of thing. I want you guys to know the truth. It's, there's a great potential here for you to not have, like I keep saying, not having a good time with this transition. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But there's going to be the, it's like bittersweet. Okay. Or uh, there could be some melancholy here, but it, it's not, it's not permanent. Okay. It's just you sort of grieving what used to be. So even though you've wanted this change, you've wanted this change and here it is now and you're going through the process of that change, doesn't mean that you're not going to miss some aspects of your old life okay so the card is decide to be happy now thank you for helping me excuse me thank you for helping me open my heart to happiness joy and bliss i am now willing to see all of the goodness in my life because you're taking off the blinders that's really what it is if your whole life has been sucked into watching someone else's next move maybe you're the one at work who's constantly strategizing and sneaking around and trying to get ahead and whatever it's backfiring on you or if that's not you you're witnessing this with someone else just heard divine justice some people around you doing shady things and I'm not talking like they just hurt your ego I'm talking like they're doing bad stuff they're gonna get caught they're gonna get caught don't worry it's not like don't don't sit there and cheer about that necessarily but I mean unless like they're hurting people and they get caught thank god okay I mean obviously but if it's just like my boss didn't give me a raise and now they're getting in trouble for something you're like yeah you deserved it <laughs> don't do that don't don't be that creeper okay <laughs> like please all right and, and you're deciding to be happy now you're not going to let that past hold you back and then we have you're on the right path you needed to hear that right you're on the right path it's not going to seem like that at first because you're going through this big transition okay Archangel Michael, I call upon you now. Thank you for giving me loud and clear guidance that I easily understand. Thank you for motivating me and filling me with the courage and confidence to make beautiful. Where did I get that from? It doesn't say beautiful. It says healthful. I swear to God, I just saw the word beautiful. I don't know. Spooky. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, courage and confidence to make healthful life changes okay i guess i see what i want to see but anyway there are beautiful healthy changes coming for you and it is having to do with laying down toxic behavior and that means you know because we can be we can be toxic ourselves when we are playing the enabler when we were saying oh that's just how they are that's just how it is and therefore we have to accept how it is because whatever you know like <laughs> you're on the right path to getting away from that and what is so lovely is that I think when you guys feel free from not having to defend yourselves all the time, because I feel like there's a sting of like, everything's always my fault. That's that scapegoating thing. Everything's my fault. Everything's my fault. And you get defensive. And next thing you know, you're coming off very pompous and like a rebel and like you're just a, you know, out there causing problems or whatever people want to say. You're going to be free of that. And once you do that, this magnificent moment occurs where you are um, 
inspired. It's been a big theme recently for a lot of people, inspired. And that inspiration might be, I'm inspired to take better care of myself. I'm inspired to get outside. I'm inspired to do pottery or painting or read a book or watch a funny show or, you know, whatever the thing is. I'm a writer, so, you know, I, I watch sitcoms and things like that because, again, I watch as a, as a writer. <laughs> so, you know, that is actually a part of what I do. So you are definitely going to, if you don't feel like you're finding your path, you will find your path. If you feel like everything is falling apart, congratulations, all right? Celebrate it. It's supposed to be happening. All right. So we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to group three. Hello, group three. Immediately, I am just kind of sitting here tuning in for you. I feel, hang with me here, because some of you, your surface level, we are doing a surface level reading here, talking about your 3D lives to bring this into that kind of context. But before we get to that, there is this overall feeling with you all that there have been troubled waters and that the waters are starting to calm. Now, here is the thing. For you all, there's a sense of, um, if you haven't experienced it yet, there will be a moment of like giddiness where it's like, oh, I found the solution or, oh, here it is. I got what I wanted. Okay. So you're heading into calmer waters, but the problem but it's not a problem necessarily, but the, the thing that you're going to be contending with would be watching things happen to other people. And so it's, it's affecting you in a secondary way. So you might feel you've had some breakthroughs, you've had some healing, you're doing great, you're feeling wonderful. And then you hear a story of something happening to someone else, maybe, you know, someone you know, and it brings you back. Your empathy is going to really be activated here. And for you, the thing that you're going to have to learn to balance is, you know, how, how much, how much empathy do I open up to this? What that means is not taking on everybody's problems, not taking on the world's problems. When you feel like you're getting sucked into a narrative, there's another aspect of this. When you feel like you're being sucked into a narrative, remember you have the right to step back. Now, I know a lot of people who are on their spiritual path, it's a very popular thing to sort of bury their head in the sand and pretend like things aren't happening. Some of you are doing that. Don't be delusional with yourself, okay? Look at the things that are coming up and make sure, yeah, because they're saying, they're, they're talking like grace and handling it with harmony and grace and, and all of that and not taking too much in, I guess, is the bottom line around that. Um, but really watching your response to things. Some of you, because you want other people to not go through what you went through, you might start to get a little preachy. I know this well. I do this myself. <laughs> I'm totally guilty of doing this. But you might start to get a little preachy. And again, even though you're like, I'm trying to save you, man. I don't want you to go down that road. I don't want this to happen to you. It happened to me. Uh, you might be met with uh, a lot of doubt, anger, frustration. And that in turn is going to knock you for a loop. Okay. So what do you need to be prepared for? What do you need to understand here? That people are on their path. They need to learn what they need to learn. If someone is in, God forbid, imminent danger, of course, you know, speak up. But if it's more of a, you know, like let's say you have a teenager or a young adult in your life and you see them going down a road that is going to really mess things up for them. And you might be very tempted to be like, no, 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 don't do that. And they say, you know what, let me live my life. <laughs> then there's nothing else that you can do. Again provided they're not going to harm themselves in like, you know, a big way or something. So giving people room to be themselves. A lot of you watching this group, you may have a tendency towards toxic positivity. Why? Because you want to be in denial. Because you want to pretend like everything's okay. So watch any tendency to not let people have problems, I think is what we're getting at here. Or to not let people feel because you're afraid to feel. That might be where some of that giddiness was coming from. 
And remember, giddiness is not, I'm an airhead and I'm just laughing about everything. It's not that. It can be, uh, I feel kind of charged because my enemy fell. Or I feel charged because I got my own way. It could be that too. Remember, there are a lot of people watching this. So there are a lot of different scenarios out there. So be careful with that. Uh, be careful with self-righteousness. <laughs> okay, this sort of thing. And again, I don't know that all of you are intending for that, but you see people who are not living up to their potential and you want to like life coach them. Even regular life coaches and readers like me, we can be annoying by telling people <laughs> like, rah, rah, you can do it. <laughs> so honor people's feelings, honor where they are. And there really is a notion here of stay out of it. Do not interfere. Do not interfere with human free will. Again, if it is a dire situation, then go in there and help. But um, offer what you can and then step back. Okay. So there is that. Um, you guys have already come through a lot of your stuff. Now, if you're still in the midst of a really tough situation, just know that the hardest part of it for most of you, it feels like you've come through it. Like you're still kind of getting the effects of it. You might still feel the pain from it. You might still feel you know, exhausted from whatever just occurred. Uh, some of you might be in a grieving space, but it's already, it's already like that, that moment of shock has already come and gone. It does not mean that for the rest of your life, you're never going to have a change or a shock or anything of the sort. It just means that this particular moment, you're 75% of the way through it. Okay. So coming through. Agitation. They're coming back to this. So I am hearing this word agitation. You might get very agitated with people who don't listen to you. Again, it goes back to that thing of, I know best. I was just through that. Or I don't, I'm don't. i trying to do what's right for you. Why aren't you respecting that kind of thing? So watch being agitated about such things. And really coming from a space of, you. some of you might have to actually close off. Especially if you have a friend who won't help themselves. They just keep, you know, expecting you to save them. Or people around you who are very entitled. Okay, um, I'm family, therefore I can do whatever I want. I'm family, therefore I can just invade you. Like, you know, and just you have to help me and you have to do this because we're family. Like, ugh, not a good narrative. So don't be afraid to have healthy boundaries. This one wants to come out. Reflection, we have reflection. So this is a time where you're really having to be very self-aware and catch yourself. Because in order for you to handle these coming times, if you're taking on everybody's stuff, you're going to crack. You're going to be rolled up in the corner, bawling your eyes out, not letting anybody help you. We can't have that. Okay, no, you don't need to struggle or suffer. Again, please make sure that if you feel like you need therapy, this is not a replacement for therapy. Check with a professional. Be discerning about who you go to. Okay, so self-reflection. This is really stopping and going, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I feel, I feel this so strongly. It's sort of, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've been functioning in this way. And I went through this situation. And I thought it was like this. But why did I, you know, it, the self-reflection is going to come up with a lot of things for a lot of you. But it might be, why did I get so upset about that? What was I really upset about? Was it that surface level? Hardly ever. Hardly ever is the case. Okay, it's usually there's some other pattern that's sort of uh, working there. You know, why do I have trust issues? Well, it's because I, you know, had a bad boyfriend. I had friends betray me or my family betrayed me or whatever. But where, where are you still hanging on to something around that? Now, if you know that a friend is someone who betrays, why are you still friends with them? Feel me? So there's a self-reflective nature of why do I tolerate or why do I get pushy with people why do I feel like I need to control things if I if I don't control it do I think it's going to get messed up <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of like <laughs> yeah I have to control things because this, this, these people here this, my family they're a hot mess and if I don't get in here and control things everything's going to get messed up and you know it's going to affect me like I get that you know there are little things here and there but the self-reflection part this is very important for you you need to have this awareness of how you respond to things and what your triggers are. What Now you've just come through all this stuff, whatever it is. Maybe you're still in the process of coming through. Now is the time, while the waters are kind of calming down for you, to look at how you've coped. 
how did I, again, calmer waters does not mean that external circumstances have stopped. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, something happening all the time at every turn. Okay. This means more how you deal with it emotionally and mentally that is getting calmer and more level. Okay. Does that make sense? So look at where you can still improve, where you can still trust others. Okay. If that's the choice you want to make, okay. And leave it at that. Not hanging on. Yeah. I, I'm hearing, oh God, I heard death grip. <laughs> Some of you have like a death grip on a situation because it just, it just feels like such an injustice and it just feels like, like you're getting even about it. Not getting even, but like your, your emotions are evening out about it. But there's still something there that just feels like an injustice. It feels like open-ended. It's not, this card keeps coming out, sanctuary. It, it just hasn't been put to rest yet. Okay, so some of you might still be dealing with that a little bit. So sanctuary, again, there's this uh, message here. And again, it's come up in a weekly. It's come up in a lot of dailies. It's, I'm going to take sanctuary within myself. And this is where this goes in with this reflection card. You're disconnecting from a story. You might even be disconnecting from people, perhaps, if that's right for you. Only you can decide that. Um, or a situation. Some of you might literally be going away. Like you're going to, I don't know, it could be like a retreat or something. I don't know. But you're definitely disconnecting from where you were so that you can think. Do you ever, you ever do this when, and, and this is a big message for a lot of you. Let's say you get into a social situation and you just wound up being with your friends and whatever and whatever. And you know you have to get up early, but I'm, you're just having such a good time with your friends. I just want to stay out with my friends. And then the next morning comes and you are not at full capacity the whole rest of the day. You're just tired and you're not doing as well as you could have. You're not being as productive, which, you know, maybe being productive is what makes you happy. And you kind of gave that up. And then you look back and you're like, okay, you know what? That friend was saying this to me and this to me and this to me. Why did I stay in that situation? It's that sort of thing. Why don't I honor what I want a little bit more? Well, let's say you're dating someone or maybe you're in a relationship and you're going into a situation and you're fine with it because you're just used to it. And then you walk away and you look back and go, why did I say yes to that? Why did I let my partner talk to me that way? Why did I agree to go do X, Y, and Z you know, that I know I don't want to do, right? It's, it's that sort of thing. So really getting that firmer sense of self um, and boundaries. For you guys, it's boundaries. But you're setting them with yourself too. Because some of you have picked up some really bad behaviors trying in the process of trying to defend yourself and make sure you're okay. You started emulating perhaps the wrong people. And you're discovering that now. So that's a beautiful choice. Oh, boy. Yeah, you have a choice. Oh, <laughs> you guys. Lord. Okay, so she's holding, I don't know, like a sphere. But it looks like it has two halves. And there's like a... I'm making this up. It, to me, it looks like a hinge. Like it would open. And it's lighting up. And it's like she's making this choice. Do I open this and see what's inside? Because once I see it, I can't unsee it. So the question here for some of you going back to that message of I just want this situation to be done. I want closure. I want it. Do you want to know the truth? Because that truth might rock your world and change everything. So that's where you are right now. You're in this space, calmer waters. You've learned how to come through or you're in the process of you're learning how to put things to rest. And now it's time to decide. Do I look within? Maybe it's your own truth. Do I, do I want to look at that? Because once it's out, I can't deny it anymore. Or am I just going to keep wondering? Am I just going to leave it as a mystery so I don't have to rock the boat <laughs> kind of thing? So make that choice. But the choice is going to become clear um, once you go through that time of self-reflection and taking sanctuary. Good, good, good. Let's see. Dreams. Uh, did this come up for group one? I don't remember, but I was like, oh my gosh, this card looks so spooky. She looks like a ghost. In this context, for all of you, 
again, well, I, uh, if it was group one, I think it was group one. It's kind of a similar message here where it's kind of like ghosts of the past. And it's sort of like these old mechanisms. They're actually using the word mechanism, these old mechanisms. Um, so it, it's this old stuck programming. It's trying to make its way out. So you're in process of that right now. And I know you're aware of it. Some of you very much are. And if you're not, it's okay. You will become very aware of it. And it'll just be like this aha moment of, oh my gosh, you know what? I do put people down because I need to feel superior. Or you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm so afraid of looking like a fool that I have to make fun of whatever's going on just so we are all already laughing should the laughter come my way. You feel me? Um, and again, I think this came up from group one with like maybe feeling like your dreams are dead like your dreams are dead. Um, and that's not the case. You have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. If you look at those patterns, and now you're in a space where you can do this. Again, get help if you feel like you need help. But now that you're in this space to be able to make that choice, you know what this feels like? <laughs> I'll just give this as an example. This could be that kind of thing. Let's go down the road of long lost love. Okay, great. So just as an example, I'm not saying that you have a long lost love, whatever. It's just, just pay attention to the undercurrent with this example. Let's say you really wanted to be with this person and you don't understand what's going on. You, you never got together and it feels like that dream is gone. Maybe that person comes back and you sit with them. And you have that conversation. You made a choice to open the truth. And what? Holy, holy. What? What? Huh? <laughs> and it's more than you ever bargained for. Uh, you might find out a lot about that person. And, and then you realize, okay, there's a reason why that didn't work out. And there it is. Okay. Or there's a reason why I didn't. Or you have some self-discovery where you're like, that's right. During that time, I was here, 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 and here. And so, of course, we were not going to match up. And now maybe you have room for a fresh start if it's appropriate. Or you may just walk away entirely like, oh, I didn't know that about that person. <laughs> um, you know, this might be one of those examples of, oh, here, this wants to come out. Um, one of those examples of, I always thought it, I would be fine traveling around with that love partner. And now that I'm older, I realize, no, I don't want that. You know, it's that sort of thing. Okay, so this card is Believe and Trust. Before going to sleep tonight, <laughs> before going to sleep tonight, say, Archangel Michael, please enter my dreams and replace fear with faith and trust. Let me be filled with strength, courage, and confidence. Yeah, like there's, uh, there you go. There's another layer of this. So messages coming, coming through your dreams. All right, and so... Some of you have already been getting a lot of those messages and you're ignoring them. You're ignoring them because you don't want to look at it. Or maybe you, oh, hot. Sorry, that was right in the microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> maybe you've not forgiven. Maybe you've not put things to rest. Um, you know, maybe there's a situation where you had an opportunity and while you're like, oh, that might be, somebody else came in and got the opportunity and you never forgave that because you saw they got ahead and, and you tried to stay in your integrity, for example, you know, like maybe they played dirty. You're just going to have to forgive that and let that go and believe and trust that there is something else opening up for you. That's where you guys are. You are in process of that. So as things start happening in the world, we were saying before, don't get sucked into it. But really, it's not getting sucked into the old way of approaching things. It's a big message for a lot of people. But not getting sucked into what somebody else, you know, says that you should be involved with. Or No, for you guys, I feel like you're doing that to other people. <laughs> so careful. Careful around that. All right. Your other card here is Ask Archangel Michael to help you with this situation. Ask Archangel Michael to show you the truth of how you show up in a situation. Okay. Archangel Michael, thank you for assisting me with, and then you describe your situation. Please help me be filled with faith and peace at all times. Again, at all times, that's not realistic. Okay. Then we're getting into spiritual sidestepping. We're not encouraging that, but definitely you're, 
you've come through so much, you've gotten to a point where now it's time to turn a corner and you have so many things to consider before you get there. Do I go after this dream that I feel has been gone? Maybe it's a career thing. Maybe it's a creative project that you let go of a long time ago. You're trying to resurrect it. Believe and trust. Sorry, I'm getting called to this card again. Let me look at this. Yeah, it's believing in yourself and believing in your dreams. Now you have space to do this. Whereas before you didn't. And that's why I'm saying like that whole getting pulled off course because of what's happening for someone else. Like you've come through your lessons. It's time for you to now take off and get headed in that direction. Now, if you're listening to this and going, talk more about me taking off, watch the ego. Your definition of being in this and of this world and in this life and whatever doesn't have to do with the, the, the projects that you do. How do you show up as a human being? That's the most important thing. Okay, so don't get hung up on, am I going to be, be famous or... Think about all the famous people. How are they doing? Great, they have mansions. Who cares? Who cares? One day they're going to have such an immense fall from grace. You want that? If you stay in your integrity, everything will work out fine. But you need to make sure you're constantly coming back within, again, going into your little sanctuary and doing some self-reflection so that you can grow in this process. Okay, we're going to get on to group four. Hello, group four. So right off the bat, I am feeling a scramble. So some of you are really pushing hard to make things happen in your world. Or this scrambled energy of, this isn't working. What do I do next? I got to push, 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 push to make something happen. And... What you're going to have to contend with if you keep on this path is having one door slammed in your face after another. So what you're going to find, perhaps, just as an example, let's say you're like, oh my gosh, lost my job. I got to scramble, scramble, scramble. I got to push, push, push. And, and then you realize this company has these policies that don't go along with your belief system. Or, you know, maybe over here they're like, well, we can hire you, but it's only part time because we're still recovering. You know, it's all those kinds of things. And the harder you push, the more likely you're going to land in a bad situation. Okay. So I, I want to start by just giving you that heads up. This is about you having more faith and trust in yourself. Now, I mean, you can go back and listen to any of the other groups because they all kind of touch on this as well. Your self-esteem has not been great. And you might laugh at that, some of you, and say, I have great self-esteem. Anybody who would say that does not have great self-esteem, okay? If someone has healthy self-esteem, they'd be like, I'm okay right now. You know, it comes and goes, <laughs> right? We ebb and flow and we have all of that going on. Um, and having that kind of awareness. I have this curl that you probably can't see because it's so light, but it keeps wanting to go right into my mouth as I'm talking. It's disgusting. Okay, anyway, <laughs> problems with the hair. What are you going to do? So for you, um, it really needs to be grounded, okay? You need to be grounded because, um, yeah, it's that kind of thing where you might try to shoot off in this direction and now you're trapped, or you're trying to go off and make this other thing happen and now that's not working. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you exhaust yourself and now you have nothing left and now you're just lying around, you're lethargic, apathetic, you know, all of these things. So your process for right now is deconditioning. Deconditioning, now how do you do that? You have to be very in touch with yourself. You're not gonna get the answers in meditation right away, perhaps not. You may not get them, you know, until another scenario rises and you find yourself reacting and feeling differently about it. And so that's where you can start getting more of that messaging coming through and that more of that assessment of, you know, what's the right direction for me to move in. So a lot of you are very stuck. You're very uh, faking it till you make it. Right? Or maybe some of you have pushed so hard in a direction that you know is not serving you doesn't feel authentic and yet it's going to make my parents happy so I'm going to do it or it's going to make me a nice paycheck therefore I'm just going to roll with it um I don't know I just heard I need to have a hot girlfriend uh, I don't know hi I don't know <laughs> I need to have a hot girlfriend to to make me well I don't know there could be some of you out there who 
who knows, maybe you have very high profile jobs. And so the image of being a, a family person is a big deal. Or maybe having to have that trophy wife on your arm puke but okay listen I'm sorry I'm judging the hustle and I shouldn't <laughs> but like you know I mean there there could be that but you're realizing like that's not going to make you happy maybe you're somebody who thought you know work is all that matters to me or just being in love is all that matters to me you know either way it's not incredibly balanced right I mean if you're like oh I just fall in love so easily you know are you giving enough time and attention to I don't know whatever maybe you do need to focus more on work okay for that sense of fulfillment or a project or you know what I'm saying like creating something you know whatever so it, it, this is a big thing for all of you to look at watch out for histrionic behavior now remember it's not a diagnosis I am not a therapist I am not a psychologist whatsoever please check with a professional but it does have that kind of feel so some of you some of you watching this you're straight up histrionics yourselves Again, I'm not a professional. I can't help you with that. Others of you are dealing with those people. And because you're empaths, it's almost like you're soaking up. I don't know. Soaking up their needs is kind of what I want to say. And also acting like them. You're like you're kind of emulating them. And there's this disconnect and there's this short circuiting. Now, if some of you live like a sloth and you're just sitting there slowly eating your snack and you're like, this is so not me. <laughs> Wait until a situation comes along. It could be very situational and then you're lit up and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to take care of this now. Um, but this is being so fearful of your existence and so fearful of the things that are happening in the world that you're just wanting to like, um, it's like whack-a-mole the problems and then you get overwhelmed and scattered and you know, there's not enough time for relaxation or fun. Now, again, I'm getting this sense that some of you may be like, no, I have a great time. I go out and I do big. Is it fun to go get yourself wasted and wake up with a hangover? Again, no judgment, you know, if, if that's where you are. Um, but cause God knows I, huh, you guys don't even know me. Okay. Like I partied. <laughs> Honey, I lived in LA and New York. I've been to Barcelona. I've partied, okay? Listen, but you know, I mean, at some point you have to realize, you know, what is making you happy. And I think that's that's part of like the scrambled marbles right now. There might be a sense of not having any control over anything. And so let's just disconnect and do whatever, okay? Um, let me sit with this for a second. I want to sit with this. Yeah, they're saying that there's a message here of not letting your heart light land. Now, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For group four here, it's sort of like, um, I want to just give my love to everybody. Let's all just get along and be friends and whatever. And now you're depleted. Um, or someone, mm, this is very specific, I admit. Someone out there, someone wants to love you and... Your heart light needs to be home so that that light can connect. And you're like, nope, I'm going out here and I'm doing this thing and blah, 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 blah. You can't catch me. <laughs> right? And so you're not letting love in. Okay, so let the heart light land. Let your heart be activated. I believe I was telling group one, I do have Archangel Raphael uh, meditations. One's over at Gumroad that goes a little more in depth. Gumroad.com slash angel souls. And then I have a free version on my channel. Working with Archangel Raphael can help open your heart. So some of you need to understand that as well. But what's more is when you let your heart light land, that's where you're going to understand what makes you happy. So simplistic, right? <laughs> but you're going to understand what makes you happy and therefore you can make different choices. And not only that, but you're contributing a, a nice light to the collective. And that's important right now too. Okay. Let's get you some cards. Let's see. Oh, I'll drop the cards. scattered all over the place worried about everything yeah so another group got this too I can't remember I think it was group two maybe um the awakening card so this is unfortunately I think a lot of you are going to hit this uh burnout where you completely were so scattered and all over the place that you just went oh I can't 
I close down. I tap out. I give up. Everybody leave me alone. Leave me with my pizza. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> but really what's happening is there's this next phase of awakening for you. And this is, if you're not familiar with this, this is a spiritual process where little by little you get back in touch with your soul. Uh, that light lights up some area of your world and you have to have some moment of self-understanding in a 3D sense. And once you do that, you'll learn the lesson from it. You come on through. A lot of times you'll have another, you know, you've cleared those lessons away and now you have another set of lessons coming through. So this awakening process for some of you, it has you, like they're, they're drawing my attention to her face. She's kind of out of it, right? Or like she's about to fall asleep or something. And some of you might very much be feeling that. Uh, some of you also... Some of you tend to be sort of the butterflies, just wanting either to avoid, escape, not land, not commit, perhaps. Leave your comments down below. I find that fascinating because a lot of times people will hear something like that and say, this isn't my message. I'm very committal. I'm very this. I'm very... So we tell ourselves a story. If you were guided to this group, this is something that pertains to you and you need to hear this, okay? <laughs> but it may not be in the exact context that I'm putting it in. I mean, you take it in for yourself, only you know you. But I, there, there might be something that you're avoiding. And what might that be? Are you avoiding accountability? Responsibility is nothing ever your fault. Um, or, you know, are you refusing and avoiding making somebody else hold, hold themselves accountable for something? You feel me? Okay. So right now you're learning about your own patterns and in the coming times, what's going to help you get through this is just being patient with yourself and understanding that everything is, a, is another chance to develop and to release yourself. Release yourself from the old way of looking at things. You know, it could be a lot of I was going to say a lot of um, brightness with this, but then I feel some of you just like drop right off and go right back into your old patterns. Ugh. Choice. This came up for another group as well. Wow, that's interesting. I don't know. If you got kind of attracted to another group, by all means do that. So this card is choice. And as I was explaining to another group, she's holding this sphere that looks like it's lit from within and it looks as if it can open. It has two hemispheres and a hinge. It can open. Do you want to open this? Now, part of your awakening, I think that message is very much, yeah, you're going to choose to open this. You're going to choose to look at some other aspect. Now, this can rock your world. It might be an aspect of yourself that you're like, you know what, I've never been willing to look at that or I've never been willing to tell myself that or, or what have you, okay? Or this, for you guys, this could be something that actually puts you at peace. Part of why you've been kind of escaping and running away from whatever is that you didn't believe in yourself or you didn't believe that you could handle looking at yourself in a way outside of how you always have you couldn't handle a new perspective right so for you guys I think this might be very empowering to open this and to see I do have that light I forgot about that I forgot how good I was at that I was telling somebody that I felt like, you know, I was in a place in my life where I just felt like such a failure. Things have not gone off the way I wanted them to. And we got to talking and I remembered this big accomplishment I had in high school. And you, if you watch my other videos, I think I've used this example before, but I had orchestrated this whole thing at my high school where uh, emergency personnel, because they have to run drills anyway. So I had told them, you know, like, why don't we do this thing where you guys work with all the units, like the EMS, the um, we even have what we call the life flight come in, the helicopter come in, police, fire, you know, all the departments. And they would have their um, training, well, like working out a scenario together in front of the high school kids. And maybe that we could stay, we had a whole script and everything. I came up with that. And a teacher of mine, we, like I said, we had a helicopter land on the field and everything. <laughs> like it was a whole thing. And uh, a teacher had me write down everything that I had done in that process and they took it to teacher conventions and now it's done at high schools all over. And I had forgotten that I had done that, that that was my brainchild, okay? And, and what that felt like 
Even when the police department in my hometown was saying, that's ridiculous. We will not be doing that. Yeah, it was all done with the understanding that, of course, if there's a real emergency, they take off. And actually, we had an emergency right in the middle of it. And uh, the helicopter had to take off. My, my friend Mike had to be basically shoved out of the <laughs> helicopter so they could take off. Okay. But, you know, it's those things where it's like you, you might open this moment up and go, I remember a time when I was super creative and I wouldn't take no for an answer. And not just in this rebellious kind of way, but okay, if that doesn't sound good, here's how this could benefit everybody. Here's the win-win in this. And that's how I got the police on board and the fire department and everybody on board was I reminded them that you have to do your drills anyway. And how often do you do it with all the other departments that in a real situation you would also be working with? Win-win, right? So figure that out for yourselves. Like where might you have something where you forgot just how powerful you are and how creative you are and how capable you are? Where did they get lost in the mix? Okay, let's see what else we have here. This came up too, intuition. <laughs> so actually, you know what this choice is, a part of the awakening is you remembering certain aspects of yourself, but also you're awakening your light. You're you're not just staying on the surface level of things anymore. Because some of you, again, I get this really big avoiding kind of feeling. Like I'm going to avoid my emotions. Just keep everything light. Pretend like nothing's happening. Everything's okay. We just explain it away, right? And now you're strengthening your intuition. And this is going to be such a guiding force for you. It's not so that you can use, because we don't want to get self-righteous about our intuition. So many people do that. My intuition said this, and I'm going to listen to my intuition. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what, <laughs> that's what it's there for. You're supposed to listen to it. But it doesn't mean that it gets to barrel over other people's intuition. Does that make sense? So there's a choice here to allow yourselves to grow spiritually. And if you get hung up in that space and you don't take this message... you will be, I'm hearing despair. And it's not like do or die. It's, you're not going to be able to handle the things that are coming down the road if you don't get in touch with this. Yeah, approaching your shadow self. Where did I go in to this way of survival that has become my personality now? Maybe it's a personality disorder. Again, check with an expert. I'm no expert. But really having to look at sense of self, sense of... Um, yeah, well, look at this. There's a moon in here, too. Oh, that's wild. And moon is all about intuition as well. It's back here, kind of here. Where, where is it now? Oh, it's like up here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but there is that. And so this is very much about emotions, intuition, how you see yourself, listening to you instead of some, like they keep saying celebrities, like watching, watching, um, who you listen to or who you emulate because this group you might be sitting there I don't care if you're again like you're an 85 year old man and you're sitting there saying no I don't look up to any celebrities you don't have a war hero that you're into or you know what I'm saying like yeah so if you think of it in that context sure you have heroes but that shadow self is definitely looking at what are your coping mechanisms how do you show up in life what are the things that you go out and do and is it serving you right um, maybe it is staying quiet maybe you're one of those people that in a meeting you don't speak up and you have to get comfortable with that oops almost dropped the deck again <laughs> all right let's see here they yeah they just keep coming back to shadow self and how you um some of you watching unfortunately you might do that competitive thing where you feel like you have to win against somebody in order to be better because that's what you were taught okay so this is decide to be happy now again came up in another group thank you for helping me open my heart to happiness joy and bliss i am now willing to see all of the goodness in my life instead of working from fear see i'm going to be happy now i'm not going to be looking at life like you know everyone's a danger and i have to watch well for myself i have to watch my own back um, you know, whatever people always let me down, all of this kind of 
thing. So you can always be there for you. And it's okay for you to be you. You guys need to hear that. It is okay for you to be you. As a matter of fact, it is time for you to be you, right? Now that version of you will morph and change as time goes on and as you get to know yourself more and more. But there's going to have to be, there's going to have to be, that's not how we say things. This is not how you speak, <laughs> There's going to be a moment uh, where you're going to have to face a hard truth about you. Okay. Now, that hard truth might be I'm insecure. Um, I miss somebody that I keep saying, like, I don't care. I don't ever want to go back to that. Or, you know, I, I do kind of mourn the fact that I don't have that job or whatever. Okay. So the card here is explore your options, dear God, or source creator, whatever you call it. Thank you for your wisdom and love, helping me see, understand, and assess all of my alternative options. Please guide me in the best direction for my health, happiness, and life's purpose. See, there's a lot of self-discovery going on here where well, you're not defining yourself under the old terms. And if you've done your shadow work, you know, okay, the way I have handled things, the way I've approached things, it's not the healthiest. I'm not showing up authentically. I'm showing up with a mask on. I'm trying to pretend to be the party girl or the person who has it all together or, you know, the executive who never makes a wrong move, you know, like you know, all of these things. And it's saying, uh, no, when we're talking about explore your options, explore how you can show up in life in a more authentic way. From that space, what's going to happen is now you're going to be able to sort of assess after an awakening, we usually do this, what what am I doing in this world? How am I contributing? How may I serve? Okay, so a lot of you have probably already asked that question of yourselves, but now you're going to get a clearer answer. You're going to really understand where you're needed now at this place in life. Now, in the 3D sense, what might that look like? Well, this could definitely be a career change for some of you. Um, or some of you might feel forced out of your job. Again, something not lining up with your morals and values. Um, it could be love too. If let's say you're dating someone and they're not treating you well. This does not encourage you to go cheat. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. But you might start looking at what you deserve. What you don't deserve. If it's bad treatment, you know you don't deserve that. I deserve love. I deserve support. I deserve to have somebody who backs me up, you know, doesn't just blind, you know, if you're doing something bad, somebody doesn't have to have your back <laughs> in that situation. But what I'm getting at here is not constantly trying to tear you down so that they seem better or whatever, but um, explore your options artistically too. Even if you don't consider yourself a creative person, journaling, um, I don't know, getting into a hobby, you'd be surprised. Hobbies are very important. It's very important to be able to disconnect from something that needs your constant attention as work does. Um, or maybe, again, maybe you don't have the healthiest partnership or healthiest friendships and go off and try something else to just shift your brain and shift how that flow is going for you. So explore how you want to live this life. How do you want to show up? And you don't have to hurry up and make a choice. I know that choice card is here. Remember, yes, you're going to eventually have to make a choice on how you want to be and where you want to be in your world, but it can come in stages. All right, so we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.